On this episode of The 318 Project, I kind of had a chance to actually sit down and do an in-person interview with someone very special to me that she was in town and just was able to do this interview. But I wanted to do something special because, again, I so much have talked on the men's topics, but I also wanted to be able to bring a woman's perspective, a wife's perspective of what men's ministry can have on a marriage and in a family. So join me on this episode of The 318 Project. This is The 318 Project, a guide to equip men through godly principles and develop as husbands, fathers, and sons. And now, your host, Ryan Hare. So thank you for joining me on today's episode of the 318 Project, and on this episode, I have for my guest a very special person that is real dear to my heart uh, and to my family. Uh, she has become somewhat of a spiritual mother to to us and over all these years, and I met them and met her uh, with her husband back in November of 2009, so actually next week is 11 years when I got commissioned. So this is a big honor for me to have her as my guest for this podcast, because this is part of the inspiration for the 318 project. So I would like to welcome you, Miss Betty King. Hi, Betty. Hi, Ryan. Thank you for having me today. Uh, It's good to be here in Florida, (laughs) away from the weather, the cold weather that's been in Texas. But first of all, I want to say thank you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who rescued me, who brought me out of the miry clay and set my feet up on a rock. And when he called me, he called me. The whole thing. It wasn't just a part. And I'm always amazed that he would use a little country girl from Broxton, Oklahoma, which isn't even a town, to go places and do things for him. And then second of all, Ryan, I want to thank you for picking up the mantle that Jack started many years ago and picking up what you knew that God wanted you to do by majoring in men and taking the message to men that uh, they are called, but there are some changes that need to be made. Right. And so anyway, thank you so much for doing that. And, you know, just because Jack started it doesn't mean that somebody else can't pick it up and take it on where it needs to go. The word of God says that some, some plant seeds, some water, and then, but God gives the increase. Right. So thank you so much. Uh, uh, this is, this is an honor. And again, that, that opportunity that we had to be with you and Jack and to travel and to just see how it was. And again, not just him, but both of y'all pouring into my life and all my family's lives. Um, and just them being able to just have that influence. And then, like you said, take kind of taking that mantle, uh, not just me, but a lot of our family has, has taken that. And it wasn't, wasn't so much even, you know, your family still does a lot of, a lot of stuff with ministry and all that as well. But just to, again, it was an honor to be able to do this. And again, when, when God put this on my heart to start, it was just, that was the direction to, to reach men. So with that, um, you kind of said a little bit, you know, coming from a small, small country town, but tell us a little bit more about yourself just so that, um, the listener kind of just gets to know you a little bit more. Well, I grew up in Oklahoma, and I met Jack at college. Um, I was an all-state basketball player and still <laughs> love basketball. Uh, but a lot of people instilled in my life things that weren't necessarily the saith the Lord, but they were good principles based upon the Word of God, like uh, and by being... Um, in having integrity, by being truthful, by being um, somebody that you would want to be a friend with. And so uh, I have a godly heritage from my mother's side, and my uh, grandfather on my dad's side was a circuit pastor. And so um, I love my, both of my sets of grandparents have lots of cousins. And so Anyway, um, when I met Jack, uh, we were in school at Cameron Junior College in Lawton, Oklahoma, and then we moved on to Northeastern at Tahlequah. And we got married in 1968, and I thought he was just going to be my knight in shining white armor. And did I ever get disappointed? 
<laughs> and he probably thought of me in different ways, too. Um, I went to school and became a teacher. And so I taught school then for about uh, two years. And then we had uh, our daughter, Melissa. And then uh, we moved to Tulsa. Uh, and I started doing substitute teaching. And so um, taught school for uh, about six years and then started doing some other type of work, which was market research work. So that kind of gives you a background of um, where I am. I have we have five children and um, and then we have 12 grandchildren and one yeah. great grandchild. Wow. Yeah. It's a nice big family. Nice big family. Yes. Yep. Um, now, you recently retired. <laughs> so you're now enjoying the retirement life in a sense. Not really. Not really. I've retired two years ago because uh, I was helping take care of Jack, and it was getting so difficult to go off and leave him to go to school. Uh, we had to have the income, let me just tell you that. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I retired in June, and then he passed away in uh, I re- Excuse me, I retired in May. He passed away in June. And so I really took a year off. I did uh, quite a bit of traveling during that time. I, I took a 10-day trip to Oklahoma and just got to see my cousins and my brothers and my sister and then other people I hadn't seen in a while. Right. And then also I um, got reacquainted with my high, with my college roommate, and I hadn't seen her in 50 years. Wow. And so anyway, we've had a great time back and forth. And then um, I actually subbed some last year. And, and I was also doing some tutoring because that way I could do it on my own time. Um, tutored a, a young girl. Uh, that was 10, Melina. And then I tutored a couple of kids at uh, Stonegate Christian Academy. So this year, uh, then when the pandemic hit, I just was... Uh, Staying in, wasn't doing anything. Right. So eventually I got out, and uh, but wasn't doing tutoring or anything else, it, except I did help uh, my grandchildren some. And then I, um, uh, this year, uh, started subbing up at Stonegate Christian Academy because the uh, teacher from last year had had a seizure this summer, and he did not come back to school. And so I've been subbing for him uh, three days a week, two hours a week. Not bad. Love it. I can still tell them no, uh, <laughs> but I don't because I've been in their position before trying to right. get subs. But anyway, yes, I did retire. I still love to travel. I still love to teach the Word of God. I still love to minister. Yeah. And and again, it's uh, not just that uh, it was all Jack's ministry, but there was a lot of times that when you even traveled or even at the conferences that you kind of poured into to the women quite a bit. Um, so how has men's ministry really, how did it affect your life and in and, and your families for all these years? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the beginning, we were at Victory um, Church, Christian Church, in uh, Christian Center, excuse me, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I've been praying, I wanted Jack to become the head of our household. Now, I would say he was the head of the household in some ways, but not spiritually. I was the one that was um, uh, heading up the, the girls, especially we just had uh, Melissa and Kara and and then Amber, um, and I was the one that was teaching them. And I was praying that God would uh, work on Jack's heart to become the spiritual leader. But when he did, I didn't want to give it up to him. <laughs> and so it, it took a while for me to step out of that role because I'd have it. And so, but I began to see what God was doing in him, changing him into his image. And he began teaching Maximize Manhood um, once a week in Coffeeville, Kansas with four other men. And then he began teaching uh, Maximize Manhood at our church. And things radically changed. Let me tell you, when I say radically, they radically changed. (laughs) But it, it had an impact on us. It had an impact on his family because um, after the tragedy of his father being murdered, um, his his family was really torn apart. And um, his, his two younger brothers, one was 
17 at the time and one was 19. And so uh, Jack began to share the word of God with them and bringing them into acknowledgement of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, uh, also with his mom. And then... um, not that, not just his family, but my family. And then we began reaching people all around us because we had a, um, a family ministry luncheon once a month and we would minister to people. And then we took over, um, like a, um, connect group, uh, with a group of people. Right. And then I also, um, Ministered to my girls at in basketball. I was their basket well as their assistant basketball coach, and so that gave me another outlet. Okay, yeah, uh, it's always like you said, it was very busy. Yes, uh, and again, that transition for seeing how Jack um, picking up that mantle, and and we see that a lot in a lot of a lot of churches and, and homes. You know, the the husband is in the church a lot of times. Sometimes they're not. But then when they see that role of what they should be taking because the wife has been in that spiritual leadership role so many so long, um, them willing to step aside can yes. be a very struggle uh, within the marriage. Yes. Uh, and so. And there were times that uh, we would have a disagreement over a decision. And uh, it came down to the point where I said, I don't agree with your decision. However, I am willing for you to make that decision because you're the one that is responsible for it. And so agreeing to disagree, but allowing him to make that decision. And sometimes it was the right decision and other times it wasn't, but not going back and saying, I told you so, you know, but saying, okay, well, yes, that was not the right decision, but let's make sure that we perfect that. So it doesn't come about again. And we make that same wrong decision. Right. Yeah. And that that's like you said that sometimes that's a hard thing it to is. to even even when it's the wrong decision for the the husband and wife to come together and just yes. agree upon mm. that decision at the time and and again when the results come. So you talked a little bit there and you said how again with Jack's testimony really try not to go too much in that one but um, with that and everything that happened and seeing how it radically changed his life and, and your your family, that whole situation mm-hmm. changed your family. And then through that was when he got connected with Dr. Cole and then started working uh, alongside Dr. Cole mm-hmm. and traveling with him and, and with C- uh, Christian Men's Network. So how uh, how has that ministry been a blessing or how has that, that ministry an impact on, on your life and in, in your family mm-hmm. through all that? that then he started traveling with, with Dr. Cole. Well, first of all, um, when God called us, uh, actually, let me back up just a little bit. Our daughter, Kara, was in the seventh grade, and we went to Amazio's Pizza. And she said, Mom, you know, with everybody moving, we're going to be the next people to move, and we're going to move to Texas. Well, at that particular time, we had uh, an offer to go to L.A., and we had an offer to go to Delaware, but not Texas. And I thought, "Mm mm-hmm, Carol, we're moving, but not to Texas. (laughs) And so God began uh, showing both Jack and I that we would be leaving Tulsa, and that was one of Jack's famous lines. He would say to me, we will never leave Tulsa. You got it? We will never leave <laughs> Tulsa. Well, famous last words. But when we when we moved, it was at a great time. Melissa had just graduated from high school. Kara was going to be in the eighth grade, Amber in the fourth grade, Zach in first grade, and Chad in uh, kindergarten. And so God opened the door for us to move to Texas. And I told God at the time, I said, I promise you I'll never look back. And say, I wish we'd never left Tulsa because Tulsa was great. And even people would say to me, how can you leave? It's so good here. (laughs) And I said, how can we not? Right. And so anyway, then, uh, beginning in the, in the ministry time, actually that fall, uh, all the kids were in school and I really had nothing to do. So I asked Jack if I could go to work at the uh, ministry. And, uh, so I would drop the kids off at school. And then I would go to the ministry. And so I learned the different aspects of the ministry, whether it was postcards or whether we were mailing out books or a letter or whatever it was, and got to meet some of the people there. And then uh, God spoke to me. Uh, It was time for me to leave the ministry and to go back to teaching. And so that is what I did. 
But Dr. Cole's ministry uh, had such an impact on our family's life, on Jack's life as a man, on my life as the wife and mother, that I still remember the things that he said. And when Jack would be gone on the weekend, I would say, tell me what he said. Mm. What was it about? How good was it? You know, just really excited about what God was saying and what God was doing. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, with with even Dr. Cole passing, you know, we still have, you know, they have his recordings and some of the videos. And of course, we have the books and to see how they still impact um, men's lives after all these years. And that's that's the beauty of of this ministry or a lot of this is that it was so relatable. And and again, it's like I tell guys, you know, it's not just the book itself, but it's when you were reading it. It was like he saw something in you. And I'm like, how does he know? He never met me. <laughs> exactly. And, but it's the Holy Spirit speaking through those principles and, and what he was relating with that was just piercing, you know, your spirit and saying, hey, this is where this is where you're failing. And it's not so much failing, but you can do better. Yes. Um, and again, it's just that's part of the Holy Spirit's checking you. So with that, I kind of want to get your perspective. This is the wife's perspective of men's ministry because you know here you know i'm talking and we've i've done a lot of episodes where i try to relate for men how how do you be how do you become better how do you grow but i want the wife's perspective of how does men's ministry really help the man from your perspective well i i did a lot of um reading of dr cole's books. Uh, Even one time in Tulsa, Jack came home and said, we're teaching a Sunday school. And I said, I'm not, you might be, but I have a a baby to take care of, which Chad was probably about 15, 16 months old at that time. But one time uh, on a weekend, he was gone and I had to teach the class and I I did not want to do it, but I, I knew I had to. And, um, it was just the principle in those books, and that per- that particular book was the potential principle, which I ended up teaching that at uh, Shady Grove when I taught school there uh, to all all my sixth grade classes, <laughs> and then I would go out once a week when I was no longer teaching sixth grade and go and teach it on Fridays and uh, on the life of Joseph, and uh, but a lot of the things that when I saw things going on in our life as a family or our life as a couple, uh, I would pray and I'd say, God, I, I'm not even sure if I know what to pray, but I'm going to pray your word. And your word is a light to our pathway and a lamp unto our feet. And if I pray that and also pray that, um, uh, you're going to, I'm, I'm going to pray things into existence, uh, praying things that are not as though they are, calling those things that are not as though they are. And I'm calling Jack a godly man and calling him a, a man that would uh, speak truth to other men and a man who would go out of his way to minister to his brother, not just his brothers physically, but his brothers in Christ. And when I began to see that, then I began to know what God was doing. But from my perspective, it changed our whole family's life to where before maybe we would allow our children to uh, go spend the night with somebody that we didn't even know the parents, but it was a friend from school to the point to where, no, (laughs) we're not letting you go until we meet these people, you know? Right. And it changed our life so much. And, and Jack in uh, daily, weekly, monthly, um, communication with Dr. Cole, it changed his life. And he would come home and say, Betty, you just won't understand or won't know what happened today, but let me share with you. And we began to share on a more intimate level than just how was your day, you know, what what happened with the kids today, uh, to a level of, oh, this is how I can pray for you. This is what I hear you saying. Um and, you know, there'd be times he would say, well, I'm just going to go and take care of this. And I said, no, I don't want you to go and take care of this. I just want you to listen and listen to me and what I have to say. And he became a better listener. I became a better listener. We both uh, 
wrote down things that, you know, okay, this is what I think you're saying. Is this what you're saying? And it would be, no, that's not what I'm saying at all, (laughs) to the point of, oh, yes, that is what I'm saying. And then when he would go on trips, like when he went to Russia, he was gone for two weeks. And that was a long time for our family, for him to be away from our family, for us to be away from right. him. And especially with Zach and Chad, because they were growing up during that time. But the ministry of Dr. Cole just took on a whole new meaning for us. And every time he would teach something, I felt like God was speaking to me directly. This is this is what you are in. This is what you need to be doing. And and call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things to come. Yeah. Again, so powerful. Um, like I said, we, we, we don't really sometimes really understand or grasp the concept of, you know, how much it impacts not just the, the husband or the man that's growing spiritually, but again, the influence that it has uh, on, on the spouse and the kids and just seeing how it can mm. be. It's that influence that being influential, um, not just by your words, but by your actions, you know, they can see the difference because, it, you know, that was the thing, you know, even, even a couple of years after getting involved with, with a lot of this and with the ministry with Jack of, you know, even my boys seeing stuff and they're like, you know, in, and even April saying, well, we see a difference. We see this change. Yes. And, you know, from my perspective, I never really saw it, but again, it's sometimes just those subtle changes. Yes. Um, that others can see in your life that, yes. you know, that can just be yes. powerful. Yes. Again, it's part of that testimony. Yes. Chad, uh, when we went to Hawaii one year, um, uh, we were, uh, watching a video and, uh, Chad gets up. I think he was like five or six. He said, no, he's he was a little, a little bit on that because we'd already been there. Maybe he was eight. He said, when a man acts like, <laughs> <laughs> acts like a child. You yeah. know? And we started laughing. But see the impact it had had on him. Right. And even today, he and I still talk about some of the things that Dr. Cole said that had an impact on his life. And and for Zach, he's very involved in in uh, their church and with his children. And just those things, you think that it uh, is just going in one ear and out the other. But with the children, no, it's it was more than that. Right. Yeah. Now, um, so with that, you kind of when when Dr. Cole passed away, <laughs> that was then kind of he then kind of gave Jack a, a, a blessing in a sense to uh-huh. then kind of go exactly. out into his own ministry, uh-huh. which then Jack then kind of launched Faithful Men's Ministry, mm-hmm. which was still kind of a part of. Right. CMN, but yeah. it was his own ministry. Right. Um, now, how was that transition now stepping out into your own ministry, you know, with Jack and, mm-hmm. and him doing a lot, still doing a lot of traveling, mm-hmm. but a lot of times I, there was, a, I guess you were traveling with mm-hmm. him to different locations. So again, both, not just him ministering, but even right. both of you ministering yeah. to, to men and women. Right. Well, for one thing, uh, no, no paycheck, <laughs> no regular paycheck, you know. So you you know that when you're stepping out in faith in what uh, God has for you, it's, it's really a time to trust him. And there have been times that we'd say, uh, God is our source. God is our source. But we found out really God wasn't our source. That was just something good that we were saying, you know, right. came down to it and and I was crying or something, you know. But it really matures you and grows you in a way that it's hard to explain. Um, but stepping out in ministry, I knew it was right. I knew it was, I knew it was God. And I knew that if, if it was God, which I believed it was, he would open the door for Jack to go places. And then uh, eventually I would go with him. I, most of the time I didn't go during the school year uh, unless we were on vacation uh, from school. Then, But I would always go in the summertime. And uh, I, I had always told God, I do not want to be a missionary. You got it, God? I don't want to be a missionary. Well, in 97, I went with our daughter, Amber, to Spain. And, um, man, did God open my heart and open my eyes. And then I began traveling with Jack and went to South America and different places like that. And then into Ireland and England and Scotland and Belgium and France and the Ukraine and all of those. And I never thought that I would go to those places. I knew um, there was a 
Oklahoma City, and I knew there was a Tulsa, <laughs> but I never thought outside of the United States. I just didn't. And I, I go back to that scripture that says, I has not seen, nor ear has heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has planned and prepared for them that love him. And yeah. boy, did he open up uh our hearts, and we became connected, so connected with people that when I would go someplace, people would say, what's your favorite place? What's your favorite place? I said, you know, I've loved all of them because I've grown to love the people there. You know, the people, we just got connected with them in our hearts. And there's some of them that we're still friends with today, or I am, you know, and just uh, really, uh, he knitted our hearts together forever and uh, loved to minister to not only to uh, the women, but children. And this last year when we went to Peru, I got to minister to a principal at a, um, uh, a special needs school and gave her a word that I, I, I kept looking for the word and looking for Jose to right. give me the word. And he <laughs> Okay. Help me out, Jose. You know that word. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't know that word, you right. know, but g- gave her a word that just encouraged her. Right. And that's what I believe I'm called to do in the body of Christ is encourage people. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, you know, even even the year when uh, a lot of the women, you know, April, my mm-hmm. mom, right. um, Regina, and some of those got commissioned for the women's curriculum. You know, you, you had prayed over them. And it was, I, you know, when I was seeing that and a lot of other times, you know, when I've been with you and, and Jack, was it seemed like you have a lot of a prophetic, um, that when you pray, it's like you, get, like you said, you know, God just shows you something about their, their spirit or about them that they haven't really told you. And you just, when you're no, praying over exactly. them, it's that, it's that prophetic yes. Uh, yes. anointing to, to, to really kind of speak yes. into somebody's life. And that's, I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know anything about anybody because then it would be me. Right. I want it to be God so that he gets the glorifying. And, you know, God just used me as a handmaiden of the Lord at that particular time. Right. Yeah. Um, again, so with so much happening now, uh, the last few years, you know, with Jack's health de- mm-hmm. declining and all that, that kind of put a little bit of, I wouldn't say a strain so much on the marriage, but again, now he wasn't being able to minister and right. go and travel yeah. like he had in the uh-huh. past. Um, what kind of effect did that have for you during that time? That's a good question. Um, a lot of my teachers would say, oh, I'm praying for you all because I know you all have loved to travel. You've loved to go places. And now that you can't. And I said, just pray that, you know, we'll be content because Paul said, uh, I've been content at where I am whether I'm rich or whether I'm poor, whether I've got a lot or don't have a lot, you know. And so um, that was my prayer at that time. And there there were times um, I would just take a trip. I'd say, uh, Jack, I'm going up to Melissa's, which uh, she and Ronnie were in Illinois, and I might be gone a week or so, but I had people coming in to take care of him, and then he had home health nurses and stuff. And then uh, there were times that I would maybe take a day trip up to uh, where my mother was and see her and then come back that same day or possibly spend the night. But, you know, I realized uh, that's just part of life. That's just where you are. And, and you know, sometimes you live in a huge house, which we lived at one time in a 4,000 square foot home. And then you come down to an 1,800 square foot home. You know, that's just life. That's just part of it. And there'll be times you get to do things and times you won't. Right. Yeah. Um, now, now with that, uh, again, a lot of his health issues and there was a big, you know, big thing that had happened with his foot and everything mm-hmm. and, and seeing that transition of just that faith of holding on to God healing and bringing mm-hmm. that, bringing that healing, you know, mm-hmm. we, we were part of the, you know, right. seeing that process, exactly. you know, that yes. to the point that we were traveling with yes. him to kind of help right. him out yeah. uh, and seeing that because it was kind of his testimony. It but was. then, mm-hmm. you know, those, those few years later when, you know, kind of another situation and, and seeing how everything Affected, you know, again with his health mm-hmm. and, and just seeing that decline, you know. I, and here lately, I've had a few people question, you know, asking me some stuff, saying, "How do you, how do you relate, or how do you overcome this stuff?" Mm-hmm. And so, here's what I kind of wanted to ask you: is as as a person of faith, you know, and again being in ministry, 
and and seeing how God had done a miracle mm-hmm. in Jack's life mm-hmm. with his foot and everything, but then to see then his health, you know, again another situation and then pass away. Mm-hmm. How do you, how did you keep your faith and not question God or get discouraged and, and, and you kind of want to get up? Cause that's where you, a lot of people, do, they get frustrated. Like, how could God do this? Or why would this, why would this be allowed to happen? So what's your take on some of that? Well, um, I, I'll be honest with you. There were days I was very discouraged and I would say, God, I don't think I can do this again tomorrow. And he would, he would say, get a good night's rest. You'll feel different in the morning. And I always did, but maybe it would be another tough day. Um, I remember one Christmas vacation every day, except for a day and a half. I either took him to a doctor's appointment, he had surgery, or he was in the hospital. But I never blamed God. I knew uh, because he did have diabetes. It was just part of that. It, you know, it was taking a toll on his body. Um, <clears throat> it was hard. It was difficult. And there were days I'd say, um, God, this is so hard. This is so difficult. Um, I know you're there, but I feel like you're far away. And God would always drop something in my heart. It might be um, two words like, I'm here. Uh, but didn't make it any easier at times. And now I've, he always did the bills. So now I'm taking over the bills. And then we had somebody that compromised our bank account. So now we're having to go through that too. And it was, it was difficult, but I believe all the years that I had spent in the word of God helped me overcome because it says that, um, be of good cheer. Be of good faith because I've overcome the world, you know, right. and I, I wasn't leaning on something I didn't have. I already had it within me. And there were times that I would just pray in the spirit, you know, and until it subsided. But I still got to minister to people at school, uh, my parents, my grandparents. I still got to minister to those. So it wasn't like it just all of a sudden stopped. Right. And then there were people uh, from the ministry that we had met that when Jack wouldn't answer his phone, they would call me and say, hey, Betty, what's going on? How's Jack? And then we had a few people there in the area that came by right. to see him and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and you know, again, that's just the thing is some people, they, you know, they kind of talk about it, you know, of being able to move on. And some people yes. just they never can transition, mm-hmm. you know, especially for, you know, being married for 50 plus years, you know, that's, years, yeah. that's, that's a big impact to just all of a sudden now that, right. that soulmate in a yes. sense is, is gone. So that's, that's half of you yes. in a sense that's yes. gone. Yes. So to be able to then transition mm-hmm. and, and function. And that was, that was not an easy time either. Whereas the two of us would go out with people. Well, now there's a one of me. Right. <laughs> and I found out that uh, a lot of people said, oh, Betty, we want to take you out to eat. We want to uh, stay in contact with you. And for whatever reason, they didn't take me out to eat and they didn't stay in contact with me, which is okay. Right. Uh, but I've learned now to um, uh, to be able to do those things that, that I want to do. And sometimes I do it by myself, you know, right. which is okay. But again, my relationship with the Lord was built on the rock of our Lord Jesus Christ. And really, it, there was nothing to take away my whole life. And this may sound cruel, but was not in Jack. My whole life was in Jesus, yes. you know. And so you can't totally be, uh, immersed with somebody and then all of a sudden they're gone and now you're looking around saying well why god what what's going to happen to me right but there was times that i um didn't like being alone i still don't like being alone (laughs) at times but i've learned how to handle it i've learned how to say okay uh let me let me pick up the phone i'll call one of the kids or i'll uh, I'll even ask the kids, hey, can I come out? You yeah. know? And sometimes, most of the time, they say, sure, I'm coming out. Or they'll say, no, I'm not, at home. we're not at right. home, you know. Uh, but I don't depend, I didn't depend on that with him. Um, as far as I want to go back just a little bit, as far as the, um, God has given me prophetic words. 
Yes. It gave me prophetic words for students. It gave me prophetic words for teachers, for parents, for grandparents. I, I remember a man that I was interviewing when I walked into the room was holding a Sprite bottle up next to his head. And I thought, what in the world is going on with this guy? <laughs> and and he asked me to share something I did. And he asked me... Um, uh, to explain the Holy Spirit to his wife and son, I made a mess of it. I couldn't e- even begin to explain. But when we were finishing up, uh, I looked at him and God began to give me a word for him, a word of encouragement, a word of uh, just knowing that God was going to do something. I said, God's going to promote you. And his wife looked across at him and said, she's reading your mail. God has given her something for you. So it wasn't the fact that what I saw when I walked in, it was what God wanted. And God had uh, planned that out. And so when he planned it out, he just needed me to be the vessel to carry it through. Right. My mother also had, uh, actually, she had some visions and some dreams, uh, but she had a prophetic word, but she never used it in in the way that God's used me in. Yeah. And so I'm very grateful for when God doesn't give me a word. And I've given people words before, and they've looked at me like, uh, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, but it didn't come true at the time, which prophetic, prophetic words don't always come true at the right. time. But it would come about maybe a year later or a few months later, and they would call me up and say, Betty, you remember that word you gave me? Yes. Well, this is what's happened. So God will either, if it's God, he'll bring it about. If it's me, he won't. I mean, it'll just fall by the wayside. Right. So that's why I want to be the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And and again, even for, for anybody that's listening, you know that's that's part of the gifts that anybody is. anybody can have. Anybody, it's, you know, yes. and it, it, but again, like you said, it's taking that time to get in the Word and, and get in that devotion time yes. of prayer, yes. praise, whatever yes. it may be, to really get close. And you know, like you said, it, that becomes the identity of you. Is not yes. so much of I'm so and so's husband or wife. Yes. I'm so and so's uh, parent. You mm-hmm. know, I'm right. you know, their dad, their mom, mm-hmm. whoever. You know, but you have that relationship and identity in Christ, and yes. that's where then you you build that relationship. So, like you said, when you, you know, when the the events of of a passing of a spouse or kids move out of the house, grow right. up and move yes. out, yeah. that now you're like, now what do we do? Like, yes. you said, what do we do? What do I do? You know, yeah. you're not you're not dependent on that now. Right. You're, you're you're putting that. Faith and trust in Christ. In Christ, More yes, than, that you've already that you've already laid that foundation, right. and so He's carrying you through that. Yes. Uh, so with that, now is there anything that anything special that you would like to share that's just on your own on your heart at this time that you just want to share uh, mm, with okay. the listeners? Well, uh, it was after um, Doctor Cole died that Jack wrote the two books, Murder for Hire and um, Assess. Um, no, excuse me. <laughs> That's the Spanish version. I saw the Anato Por Contacto. He got in real big trouble. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, an unnatural act of forgiveness. Yes. And um, your mom's been teaching that to the ladies at the church. And so I was asked to come uh, last Tuesday night and speak to them. That was ab- absolutely awesome. And I spoke a word over those ladies at that particular time. Uh, but, you know, I just uh, pray that people out there, uh, I've said, this past year uh, all the time where I said I said it before but this year has become I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus no matter what's going on around us no matter what this person says or that person says or does or doesn't do I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus because that way I'm not swayed by anything that would be going on around me and and there's even been times, uh, you know, through different uh, things at different churches, I've had to say, oh, that's why I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus, you know. Right. And I have found out that uh, the other thing that God told me, he said, when people ask you how you are, you tell them it is well with my soul. Well, when I was leaving Dallas the other day and went up to the uh, security uh, I had my passport <laughs> and I, cause that's a, sometimes it's a lot easier than getting out my right, driver's right, license. Yes. And, uh, the, the man said, well, how are you today? And I said, it is well with my soul. And he <laughs> kind of stopped and he said, that's really good. He said, 
it is well with me too. And I said, hallelujah. And so he said, pull your mask down. And I did, and he could see my picture. And he said, you have a blessed day now. And it had an effect on him to the point it, it may have changed his whole outlook for the day, right. you know. Yeah. And so I say that to people, and then um, that first of all is scriptural, and then it's something that causes them t- to think, yeah. you know, about saying, "Oh, I don't know what's going to go on with this pandemic." You know, right. uh, was had a garage sale about a, uh, two months ago. My friend and I had a garage sale, and so God told me to pray for the people that came up, and I was able to pray for every one of them but one. One of them said, no, we don't need any prayer. Okay. But one man said to me when I started, uh, I asked him if I could pray for him. He had just moved to Arlington from Dallas. And uh, he said, oh, he started crying when I was praying for him. Uh, and it just changed his whole day. And he said, thank you so much. And the whole time he was there, he was crying. And afterwards, <laughs> he came up to me and said, thank you so much. I want to tell the listeners that's how easy it is to minister to other people. Right. But you got to get out of your comfort zone. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got to step out and say I know God has told me to come over here and say something to you. And and this actually happened to me in church one time. I I saw this lady and I I knew God had a, a word for her but I didn't know what it was. And so I kept staring at her thinking, okay, God, you can give me the word anytime. <laughs> give me oh, yeah. the word. And so at the end, when the pastor said, well, go and greet people, I walked around to her and I said, this is what came out of my mouth. I said, God wants me to tell you to trust him. And he, she said, I am. <laughs> and my first thought was get up and leave. Okay. Yeah. You don't need that. And so I said, well, I know you are, but I believe God wants you to trust him even more. And she said, I am. <laughs> if you didn't get the first time, let me get it this time. Yeah. And so uh, I said, well, I'd like to pray for you. And so I prayed probably a 10 second prayer. And what I said was, Father, I ask that you would do something so spectacular for this young lady in the next seven days that she would know it's only you. And I heard back to my seat. <laughs> <laughs> the next Sunday, she met me at the back door. Wow. And she told me, I have to tell you what happened. <laughs> and, you know, it's a, it, it's a long story, but she had lost her job and, at a bank, and she hadn't been able to get one for six months. And then that week, a bank, another bank called her and said, we'd like for you to come in for this interview. She goes in for the interview. And after the interview, she said, well, I'll get the job. And, and they said, no, but we have something better for you. Wow. And I said, hallelujah. <laughs> you see, God wanted to take care of you. Yeah. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to use you and I, uh, anybody out there that will be a willing vessel. You know, yeah. uh, Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be across the ocean. doesn't have to be across the state. It can be across the street yeah. next door yeah. or where you go in the marketplace. You know, that's what God wants to do. He wants to use all of us to further his kingdom. Right. Yeah. And like you said, you know, it's part of that being just being a willing vessel. Uh, yes. You know, not everybody, we, when we think of ministry, we're thinking the pastors and the evangelists, mm-hmm. the, the bigger stuff, but you know, a lot of it is just simply that, like you said, sharing a testimony or just, Yes. You know, that, that feeling sometimes of just saying something and like I said, getting out of the comfort zone to just yes. share something with somebody that you have this feeling of, you know, I don't know what to say, but you know, God's put this on my heart to say yes. something to you or pray, yes. for, ask to pray for him, yes. whatever it may be, but it's just being that obedient servant. It is. Um, yes. And and God will open the door. I've seen God open the door many times to even somebody that didn't even want me to pray for them or didn't even um, realize who I was. And um, and 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 God will use you to minister to that person, and it will make a difference. You know, they'll come back and and tell you, and and sometimes they don't, but you know in your heart that you've done that which God wanted you to do, and it wasn't anything that you did. It was him opening the door for you to go. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, So this has been a great honor. Thank you. having you with Thank you. with us and being able to do this with me um, because again when I was starting a lot of this you were the first one that I was calling 
because I wanted a little bit of your input. And, and again, just the, like you said, that part of that prophetic and just what you were speaking to me uh, about this podcast. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people say, well, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you mm-hmm. doing this? And this is direction that God has put me right. in and yes. I'm trying to stay as faithful mm-hmm. to it. Um, with that, because I'm not looking for the, those big numbers, right? You know, it's just being able to feed into that one person that's listening to it right now. That's right. Yes. Um, that if it can bless their heart and bless bless them and strengthen them, uh, to just help them grow, and that's that's all it is. You know, like you said, it's that that watering, you know, planting, watering, or in God, but God in all of us gets the increase. He will. So. Um, again, Betty, I just appreciate you being here, taking the Thank time you. to, to do this for me, uh, to be and speak to those that are listening. And as we close for closing for this episode, can you just close us out in a word of prayer? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Heavenly Father, we do come to you in the name of Jesus and thanking you, Father, that the hearer will hear what you have for them and you will have them be at a place where they are in a receiving mode to hear what you're saying. And Father, I thank you that as you anoint their ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, it will also encourage them to step out in faith, to go where God's called them to do, even if it means it is a cross town, to a place they don't even know of. Or, Father, give them a word spoken in due season, how good it is. So, Father, thank you for the anointing upon this podcast and upon the other podcasts. And thank you, Father, that you are the great I am. All we have to do is to trust in you and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you and you will direct our path. And I thank you, Father, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And thank you. So I hope you enjoyed that interview with Betty King. And again, it was such a privilege to be able to do that interview with her and in person when she was in town about a month ago when we did this recording. But again, to get her perspective of how men's ministry can affect a marriage and a family when God really works in it and moves and seeing how it just impacted their lives and their their family and, and with ministry and everything that they did. And again, I want to thank you for joining me on this episode. And again, remember to like, subscribe, and share it with other men. And again, I want you to have a blessed and wonderful day. Thank you for joining on this adventure of integrity and honor in godly masculinity. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this podcast with other men. And remember to keep building faithful men.